You're here because you need help on defense in Madden 24. I'm here to help you. Now, defense can seem very overwhelming and very complicated at times, but the basics are really not that difficult, and I'm here to break it all down for you. The first thing we have to talk about is matching personnel. So when you're in a game, whether it's versus the computer or another opponent, let them pick their offensive play first. A little pop-up will appear on the screen that lets you know their personnel. It might say three receivers, one running back, one tight end, and basically you're going to use that to determine what you should come out in. If the personnel says that there's two wide receivers or less, you typically want to use a 4-3 formation or a 3-4. Depending on your playbook, you could have both like this playbook or you could have one or the other. But if they're coming out in two or less receivers, a lot of the time that means they're likely running the ball. So you want to come out in one of these heavier defensive sets that's equipped for that. Now, if you see three receivers, that's when you want to look at nickel formations. Now, the difference between nickel and the 3-4 or 4-3 is that with nickel, you have an extra cornerback on the field. So instead of having two corners, you have three so if they're coming out with three receivers you want to be able to match that with cornerbacks because you want to match speed for speed you don't want to have a linebacker matched up with the receiver if you see four receivers or more that's when you can look to formations like dime and dollar which both have four cornerbacks on the field now, just because your opponent comes out in a three receiver set doesn't mean you have to come out in a nickel set. You can go for a dime or dollar if you want, if that's something you're more comfortable in. You just never want to have less cornerbacks on the field than they do receivers. Because, for example, look what happens if they come out in a three receiver set and we come out in a 4-3. We have a linebacker lined up on a receiver, and that's not good because the receiver is going to cook him every time. Now, granted, if you're in a zone defense, it wouldn't be as bad because you're not defending one-on-one. -on -one, but typically, you still want to match personnel because you still want the speed on the defense to be closer to the speed of the offense. So, if they throw a quick pass to the receiver, yeah, this linebacker is not defending him one-on-one, -on -one, but he may have to chase him down and he might get outrun and on the flip side you don't want to be in a dime or a dollar defense if you see your opponent only has one or two receivers on offense because that means they're likely running the ball you don't want to be in a defensive set with all these dbs on the field because that's going to make it a lot harder to stop the run and they're going to pick up easy yardage now let's talk about basic adjustments so to adjust your defensive line what you want to do is you want to press left on the d-pad and that's going to bring up your defensive line adjustments in the bottom left corner once you hit left on the d-pad you could see you have options on the left joystick this is how you can spread your d-line pinch your d-line or move it to one side or the other now i don't use this a whole bunch but something you may want to do with this is you may want to pinch them for example if you're expecting a run like if your opponent's in shotgun but sometimes he likes to run the ball up the middle maybe you want to pinch your d-line just so that you're clogging up the lanes a little bit more whereas if you're not worried about the run and you want better pass rush maybe you want to spread the line just to make it a little bit harder on the offensive line to block them now once you bring up your defensive line adjustments on the right joystick this is how you can crash them you can slant them to the outside you can slant them inside you can slant them left or you can slant them right now once again if i'm expecting the run i would slant them inside but if I'm going for pass rush, I would more than likely slant them outside so they can get that outside rush against the offensive tackles. Now, hey, if you're still here at this point of the video and you haven't subscribed yet, you might as well join the family so you can stay up to date with all the best Madden tips so that you can win more games. Now, to adjust your linebackers, you're going to press right on the D-pad. That's going to bring up your linebacker adjustments, and they're kind of similar. On the left stick, you can spread them, you can pinch them, and you can move them side to side. Typically, I don't really mess with linebacker adjustments. Adjustments. Again, if you're really expecting the run and you want to pinch the D-line and the linebackers, you can kind of do something like that. But typically, I don't like to spread linebackers around too much. I mainly just do the defensive line, if anything. Now, on the right joystick, when you bring up your linebacker adjustments, you can zone all your linebackers out by pressing up on the right stick. That's going to put them in the hook curls. You can blitz all your linebackers by pressing down the right stick. So if you're just in the middle of a play and you say, you know what, I want to send an all out blitz. I want to blitz all my linebackers. I want to try to get some pressure on the QB. You can do that and try to get a sack on the quarterback. That's something you can do on a beginner level if you just want to switch that up in the middle of a play. You can also just blitz the one on the left or the right by going left or right on the right joystick. So here, I'm just simply blitzing one of my linebackers instead of both of them. And if I decide I want to change my mind, I can always just go ahead and zone them back out really quickly as well 
by going right on the d-pad and up on the right joystick so i can get them back into those hook curls and they're ready for coverage and really quickly i do want to mention that i also have a patreon page with higher level madden tips strategies and ebooks that will help you dominate your opponents so if you want to take your game to an even higher level you can check the link out in the pinned comment below now to adjust the secondary you want to press the wire triangle button and here on the left stick you can see that you can give cushion by backing off your secondary that's something you might want to do at the end of half or the end of game if you just want to make sure they're going to get back further and don't easily get beat over the top if you want to press them you go down on the left stick after pressing wire triangle typically I'm only going to press if I'm in like a man defense for example if I want to get a jam on the receivers but keep in mind that sometimes a good receiver could get off the press quick and beat you so it's kind of of risk versus reward now on the right joystick you can shade your secondary so if you also want to give extra protection over the top you can go up on the right stick to shade over the top which basically they're just going to bail out a little bit further whether they're in man or they're in zone now shading underneath is actually a very underrated tactic that can be used to stop underneath routes like drags and flats which people usually have a lot of trouble with so right here i have two drags on the play and the defense is in a standard cover three and i want you to see what happens we can dink and dunk underneath usually pick up five yards sometimes a little bit more depending on the defense now if someone's doing that every play throwing to the flats throwing the short drag routes and you want to stop them and you're in a zone like a cover three a cover two or a cover four you can press wire triangle down on the right stick and notice how now those purple zones have turned into light blue hard flats also these two hook curls are going to play a little bit more aggressive as well now when we try to throw these drag routes you'll see that they're all over it and we almost got to enter interception there and a lot of times you will get an interception and it'll go to the house because you've told your defense to play underneath just keep in mind when you tell your defense to play underneath you're gonna be giving up some deeper passes too so it's again risk versus reward cat and mouse if your opponent's spamming underneath occasionally shade your zone coverage down and try to get an interception or a big stop now here's another example i'm in a cover two but i have shaded down so watch what happens if i try to throw this quick flat to the a receiver notice how the corner is there and just what i said it's a pick and when you get those type of picks they're gonna go to the house because there's nobody in front of them so if someone's spamming underneath shading your zone coverage down is one of the best things you can do now when it comes to adjusting you can also adjust players individually now for more beginners i don't really think you should touch the secondary players you want to leave those guys alone because you can easily put them in the wrong assignment and just give up one play touchdowns if you want to adjust secondary players just do the shading like i just told you to make them play either more aggressive over top or underneath but when it comes to linebackers for example these are great players to adjust because it can kind of help you throw something different at your opponent on any given play so for example right here i've got eric kendricks and a hook curl but maybe i want to defend the flat but i don't want to shade down and i don't want derwin james playing the flat i want him to play a little further back in the assignment that he's in well i can take this guy right here i can press the a on xbox or x on playstation button and you can see different assignments come up that i can put him in i can blitz him i can man him up i can drop him back i can put him in a middle read i can put him in a hard flat so the hard flat is right on the right stick that's what i'm going to put him in so now i've kind of got double coverage on the side of the field if the running back goes to the flat he would take the running back and this guy here derwin james would continue to drop further back right here maybe i want to man this guy up on the running back again i press a or x up on the right stick for man coverage and then i choose who do i want to man him up on i want to man him up on the running back which is rb so i select rb now he's manned up on the running back and one of the most important adjustments you can use when doing this is actually using the qb spy adjustment if you're dealing with fast quarterbacks this will allow this player to follow the qb and if he starts to scramble he will attack but you don't want to be using this guy if you're putting him in a specific assignment you want to get off of him and let the computer user him and then you're going to take this guy and try to just stay home in your area you can also use the adjustments on the d-line if you want to drop some extra coverage back let's say i want to drop joey bosa back which probably isn't a good idea because he's going to be better rushing the passer but let's say you want to just quickly throw something different at your opponent you can drop him back 
into a vertical hook or something whatever you want to do just to give some extra coverage on the field and try to catch your opponent off guard so let's talk about containing mobile QBs next we switched up to the Eagles here so we can have a faster quarterback I'm going to go ahead and use that QB spy assignment that I just talked about I'm going to put Eric Kendricks in a spy and I want you to watch what happens if I try to roll out with Jalen Hurts you see how he's going to follow me the entire way and he's going to limit the yards I can get right there I got back to the line of scrimmage because he was on me every step of the way this is what happens when you tell somebody to spy the QB that's all they worry about is watching the QB wherever the QB goes this guy goes and he's looking to attack and he's not going to allow him to get too many yards now you can also try QB containing to contain mobile QBs but it can be very hit or miss to do this you press the RB or R1 button twice now you can see the outside pass rushers are in a QB contain, but just know that sometimes these can be very hit or miss, but this is what's supposed to happen. They're supposed to stay on the edge and not allow you to go anywhere. Now, if the QB contain is not working well for you, then just stick with the QB spy because that one's usually pretty foolproof, or you can use both if you're really worried about somebody like Lamar Jackson. Now let's talk about run committing and pass committing. These are things that you will use from time to time, but you have to be careful with them. So for example, if you have a guy that's just running the ball down your throat over and over and over and you want some extra help especially on a big down maybe it's third and two you know he's going to run the ball again you can do something that's called run committing by pressing the rb or r1 button and you'll see in the bottom left hand corner here on the right joystick you can guess play you can guess pass which is up you can guess run up the middle which is down run left which is left and run right which is right typically i don't like to go left or right because i don't find that they work that good if i'm gonna run commit i always choose run up the middle and what's going to happen is everybody's going to immediately come forward and you should stop the run now this can be hit or miss sometimes in madden as well because madden is weird and doesn't always work properly but it's usually not going to make you any worse off now the thing here is you don't want to run commit too much because a smart player will start banking on the fact that hey he's probably run committing here and then what they'll do is they might come out in a set where they normally run the ball and instead they're going to pass and everybody comes forward and then you give up a one play touchdown so when you are run committing you have to really be careful and choose your spots to use it you don't want to get too trigger happy with it calling it way too often because you will get caught lacking now pass committing isn't as dangerous because you're not going to give up a one play touchdown if you guess wrong on a pass commit you will give up some yards on the ground if they do run the ball but it's nothing major but if someone's really hitting you with a lot of play actions and you can't seem to get to the QB your defense keeps getting faked out pass commit works well wonders versus play action because it keeps your guys in coverage home and they're not biting on the run but it also allows your pass rushers and your blitzers to only focus on going to the QB they do not even bother worrying about the running back so to pass commit you press RB or R1 and then up on the right joystick and then if they go into a play action and you're sending rushers you're gonna have guys in the backfield pretty quickly to sack the QB now let's talk about the coverages that you want to know about now the most popular zone coverage is cover three it's a pretty safe coverage overall it's gonna keep a lot of stuff in front of you it's not the easiest to beat deep unless you're playing an elite player that knows some glitchy stuff but more times than not this is one of the safer coverages you can call it'll keep things in front of you they can hit the seams they can get little quick dump downs to the flat sometimes if you're not shading underneath but you usually won't give up big plays to people unless there's somebody really good cover two is probably the second most popular zone coverage which again is going to be good at keeping a lot of stuff in front of you make your opponent kind of dump down dink and dunk and then your defense can rally down lay hit sticks and try to make them work for their points now you can give up some big plays down the sidelines or down the deep middle if your opponent can buy time but he also has to be pretty precise with his passes to fit him into the window so again if you're not playing a super elite player cover two is going to be a really good option to make your opponent work for points cover two man is also going to be a very safe defense now man defense has gotten better over the years in Madden so this is something especially if you're a really beginner that you might want to use because it does a lot of the work for you man defense defense can be hit or miss though some plays the defenders are going to get cooked in man some plays they're going to lock down everything and that's kind of the benefit of man is your opponent on offense a lot of times he's not even going to know who's going to come open or not because man is kind of random but you shouldn't give up too many big plays because you have two deep safeties over the top and again you're going to make them have to find the open receiver cover four can also be a really good beginner friendly option to keep a lot of stuff in front of you as well this is going to be the hardest coverage to beat for big plays and again if you're 
not a really good player, you'll probably struggle going against the cover four. So this can be something if you're really a beginner, you might want to try cover four before you try anything else because this can really be tough for a lot of regular players. Now, if you want to blitz your opponent, the easiest way to do this is to look at man blitzes. You want to pick a play that has six people blitzing. So if you look on these plays, the red lines on a player means that he is rushing or blitzing. He's going after the QB. So for example, this play three, four odd pinch bug zero that has six guys blitzing. This play right here, nickel two, four over storm brave has six guys blitzing. The play right next to it, silver shoot pinch also has six guys blitzing. So this is something you can throw at your opponent every now and then when you want to get some heat, because if you're not blitzing every play, they're likely not going to be blocking a running back. They're just going to have their standard five offensive linemen blocking, which means you're bringing six versus five you're gonna have an extra rusher this is how you catch people off guard and try to get a big play get a sack get them behind the chains so you see here if we snap the ball look at this we got a free guy at the qb instantly everybody's manned up and we get a sack now yes when you're using these cover zero style blitzes you don't have a lot of deep help everybody's one-on-one -on -one. so if you don't get over the qb you could give up a big play that's the risk reward that's why you want to call this every once in a while to try to catch them off guard now the last thing i want to talk about is using a defender on defense and this is going to be the hardest part but it's something that you need to learn now in my opinion when you're going against passers you're going against shot gun players or it's passing downs you're typically going to be in a nickel a dime a dollar you're going to be in one of those types of big formations and in those formations you can sub in a linebacker or a safety rather at linebacker so at your play call screen here before you go into the formation if you press the y or triangle button you can move your little cursor around and you can take out one of the linebackers and what you want to do is put one of your safeties here the reason you want to put a safety here is because they get better animations they have better change of direction and they move faster they're going to be able to cover more ground and get better interceptions than linebackers can you can use a linebacker if you want but it is going to put you at a bit of a disadvantage now when you're beginning as a user the thing that you want to do is not do too much you want to just try to take away the main route because everybody has the main route they want to go to you're playing an opponent online you know they have that one go-to play where they're throwing the post route or they're throwing the drag or they're throwing the crossing route and if you can just get good at taking away the main route that your opponent wants to throw you will instantly get twice as many stops in Madden because most people don't have a plan B if you take away the thing that they want to go to they kind of get a deer in headlights type of mentality they hold on to the ball and they either take a sack or they force a bad pass which could be intercepted so when you look at a play like this and the tight end is always running this route, if you just run with him, you can either make the QB hold the ball like right there and get sacked or they may just throw you the ball. So just get used to taking away one route on a play. Just run with the guy. You're going to make mistakes at first. That's just what comes with usering. You're going to make plenty of mistakes. You're going to give up plays. You're going to give up touchdowns, but that is the only way to get better. You have to take those lumps and once you get better at usering, your defense is going to go to a completely different level it's the one thing you can do to really transform your defense more than anything else so just take a guy get a safety kind of learn what your opponent likes to do and start taking away the one main route that they want to throw to and watch how much you improve now that you know about the defensive basics you need to learn about what to do on offense so that you can put points on the board after you get your stops and you can check out that video right here on the screen